initial session because um, there are two things one i wanted to like probably uh, talk with you and and probably describe why this course i mean and and why this becomes important is because there are a lot of courses which are available online if you see coursera courses are available edx are available and and in india also there are so many other players who are providing those courses so i i also have used those platform i've been an instructor on those platforms uh, typically udemy i have put courses uh, here also like uh, in at least one or two at least in two three programs i've been the instructor so, uh, and like as ganguly mentioned that um, uh, probably see if you look at my let's say background then i have worked with academics so academics is known for being let's say very very good at fundamentals and theory that's the because there is a lot of research that you require to do so that is one part academicians are good at theory and and, uh, and they are good at it the second thing is i worked very extensively with a uh, company right now also i'm working with mnc uh, and i'm handling the ai and, and machine learning team there so i work with different industries not only one industry so like example i work with automobile industry the healthcare industry a uh, us healthcare industry and the fintech space in india and now i'm into a financial company which is again a us company so that way like i have uh, a rounded let's say experience in knowing with this now when i look at these courses i clearly see either they are too let's say theoretical right so example like i to be very specific it's a very good course there's no uh, one of my like favorite courses machine learning by andrew ng but uh, that is more like inclined towards theory a lot of theory nice theory is told there but then what happens is generally or, or you look at any other uh, thing generally it would be theory or the examples that are shown are not very very deep right i very well know that with that amount of learning because i recruit lot of people i take lot of interviews and and i'm also into team building and 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 all those things so i definitely have an idea with that amount of let's say uh, knowledge it's very very difficult to probably solve any kind of a business problem this is point number 1 second number uh, when you look at people who are experienced in the industry let's say people who have spent 8 years 10 years now if you take those kind of a courses then the problem is that you will have to start at the very basic right because those are very basic courses so you will have to learn as you go so managing team or ma um, knowing the length and width of of these uh, machine learning algorithms absolutely becomes difficult so this is a clear cut uh, let's say gap that uh, i could definitely see and generally like what i require is people who are bit experienced i mean who want to change career so properly people who are bit experienced who want to change careers for some reason or want to add an additional skill right so those are the kind of people for whom like typically i have designed uh, this course right so Uh, there are two things that i have kept in mind one that as soon as you get into the industry as you get your hands on the data you know what is the first step to be taken right data believe me data comes in so many forms that probably at times it becomes very very difficult even to understand what is the step number 1 to take right so that is very well like on my mind when i do this course i definitely try to take you across all all those issues all those uh, let's say confusions that happen right so uh, that's one high point probably one usp of this course and what i've done is that i've tried to cover almost all the topics that that are necessary for you to start for example the more focus would be on machine learning i'll try to cover some part of ai it's not that i do not know ai i don't uh, probably use ai my only concern is that if you try to pack too much of a punch in in one course probably then it becomes very very difficult to digest right so that is the problem you, because we are going to do this course in a limited time so we have to understand or probably as i said like i i also have a background in training almost all leading company i have been a trainer or i have trained them i have been associated to good uh, universities also where i am a visiting faculty to many universities so with all this experience i definitely know that when when we are working in a limited kind of a time frame uh, probably packing in too much of uh, let's say content actually doesn't work at at some point of a time it becomes counterproductive right so what is required is to balance the uh, techniques that are being told or or being let's say told uh, or 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 we are discussing here or
uh, delivering here. Uh, that's one thing. And the other thing is to really know deeply about it. What are the different situations you might face? Like say there is a standard. Let me give an example. Like let's say a very standard algorithm. People say that support vector machines and random forest are some of the very advanced techniques, right? Uh, you may be working in this area or you may not be working in this area, but I'm sure you would have come across these two words, right? And when you have come across these two terms, that means they should be very, very popular. Now, in my last company or in the present company, to my surprise, what I found is that these two algorithms are probably useless. They just don't yield the kind of result that I want to do, right? So what I want to say is that if you look at the internet, there is a lot of, let's say, prescriptions which are floating around. This happens to be the best algorithm and, and those kind of things. Uh, but believe me, all those things um, definitely don't work. and 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 there is a reason because all these algorithms when they were developed they were all developed in 80s and 90s and do you think at that point of our uh, at that point like we had this complex data this big data to actually test all these algorithms so all these algorithms are developed uh, in the past and we are using them on the present data that is one probably problem so how do we understand how do we like cover up this gap the present day data versus algorithms which are which were developed in 60s 70s 80s i mean 80s is the la latest where where you see these algorithms svm was developed in late 80s right or or a random forest was also developed in early 90s nothing has been developed after 95 all these algorithms that we teach so it's it's good 30 years i mean that these uh, algorithms have worked so those kind of a dimensions do we understand those dimensions and how do we deal all with so this is one objective where uh, probably that i've kept in mind from a practical uh, let's say uh, exposure to industry to training uh, to a lot of participants i, I think um, probably the number of uh, people that would have sat through my training uh, online as i told uh, various platforms i've done online training i've um, uh, done it at many places that that has been a uh, almost like uh, around 1000 participants i would have interacted so with that uh, kind of a context why i'm telling you this is so that you know like why like why, why have i put things the way like i put right so that is one part the second thing is i'll uh, probably and try to take you through the topics that I that I put right. So probably that is something that may be of interest to you, and and probably that would be the more useful thing, isn't it? Ultimately, that's what uh, like uh, probably uh, you are going to deal with. So so if you look at this course, like it starts with the introduction to let's say machine learning, right? So th there's the machine learning and and all those things that happen. Let me go to the detailed thing. Uh, let me just change the tab. So here we start with the introduction the world is changing fast you know this probably i mean it doesn't take a session but just just an opener where we get introduced uh, these two languages are the most popular languages if you programming languages if you see r and python r is good when you want to really deep dive and python is good when you want to scale very quickly or or python is also good when you're working with web-based data or unstructured data their python is really good so i'll say that uh, the debate is not r or python it is r and python please remember that it's always good to know both the languages i mean it's not that i learn r or python so that is why i've included both the languages both are open source that means uh, the resources are available you can download you can use it not a problem uh, if you look at typically if you look at what is a machine learning algorithm when we talk of machine learning algorithm typically it has three parts uh, the first part is about some method so that means you are slicing and dicing some data moving some data here and there so that's the part right so that's the that's the first portion uh, the the second portion is some optimization uh, method um, uh, that is like uh, there. So the second part is about optimization methods. What are the different optimization methods that are used? Why do you optimize? Of course, because you want to reduce your errors. Errors cannot be made zero, so you optimize, right? So that's the second block. What kind of optimization methods you use? The third block, which is very, very important, is about evaluation. When you get an output, how do you understand the algorithms are uh, are really let's say standard uh, but the data keeps on changing so if the data changes if the input changes definitely that will have a bearing on the output so how do we understand whether the output 
output is really fit for consumption is it really good where you can uh, stand and announce to the world that okay i solved some kind of a problem so how do we ensure all those things so the third block is about evaluation and this evaluation is is something which is very very important which these courses definitely miss uh, and 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 they just uh, say that okay run this algorithm and eureka you have some kind of a good result that happens so that's why the logic is that we start and brush up some fundamental of uh, statistics because statistics uh, this third block that i'm mentioning about machine learning algorithms uh, this comes from statistics definitely so it's very very important that we know some part of statistics i'm not saying that you become expert statisticians but at least there are four five topics which are very very important which are generally like descriptive statistics where we try to understand each column uh, in in isolation the second thing is distribution distributions are definitely very very important so that uh, if you know that your distribution is not of a particular kind it's of a different kind and if you are going ahead with algorithm you definitely know that there are bound to be some errors that are going to be there if you have a knowledge of distribution you will know beforehand that how much uh, by how much will i miss my ideal solution mark right so that's why distributions probability theory is like the basis of all machine learning algorithms if i put it this way so we should know it and then hypothesis testing which is a formal system of testing anything so at least these four topics we should know uh, and probably there are other three four topics probably which may not be important or which can be left to you to learn and if you have any queries there you can come but these four are very important and 90% of the time uh, probably they suffice so this is what our statistics probably module is then in the machine learning um, uh, algorithm then we start with machine learning algorithms there if you look at it then machine learning algorithm you can have different ways of looking at it machine learning algorithm we can have linear models we can have non linear models from a learning perspective we have supervised learning we have unsupervised learning or something like a mixed learning right so now if you look at it like a matrix then what will happen is we will have uh, models which are linear non linear then we have supervised unsupervised kind of learning so if if i look at this then this is a and then if you look at data data can also be two types right it could be a ratio kind of a data numbers that you deal with or it could be a data which is categorical like example name of cities name of people those kind of a thing so if i look at this matrix which is a three dimensional matrix and i want to populate each cell of it then we need to know something where we have let's say a linear model which is supervised we ne we need to know something where we have a linear model which is completely unsupervised right then we should know something which is a non linear model a supervised one and a non linear model which is supervised right so this is the combination because these are the different kind of situations that will arise right so how do we then then if we understand the situation that okay this will call for a non linear kind of a modeling but the situation calls because i pass data so i can do supervised learning so if i take this combination then what are the algorithms which are available to me so what i've tried to do is based on these combinations we definitely have a, a choice of algorithm this is one and also the second constraint is you look at uh, at certain algorithms which are important which are bread and butter we should know right so that is why if you look at it like uh, concept of learning i told you error what are errors i mean uh, how do we optimize error so you should know that philosophical that theoretical part of it uh, then probably you will be better equipped to understand why an algorithm is not working or what can you do further i mean that's at least if if an algorithm hasn't worked i mean then you know what can be done where where the uh, root cause of the problem could be so understanding the root cause even and shall i change the algorithm shall i do something to the data all those things i'm a practical aspects to it okay so then fitting linear models i told you then how do you understand the model that your fit is good or not so how do you diagnose that uh, then there are some models which are which are not uh, there are situations where a linear model may not be fitted but if you do some let's say transposition then you can make it behave like a linear model so that is known as a generalized linear modeling philosophy so what is that what all models fit there uh, we'll do some case studies there then 
profiling and segmentation will mean cluster analysis so we do around five six type kind of uh, cluster algorithms right there uh, so we're different kind how do we do it on a big data how do we do it on a small data and all those things right then we go to classification classifiers are the maximum used algorithms in any business setting so we'll cover at least seven eight classifiers so if one classifier is not working uh, you can choose different classifier or you can combine them at line times isn't it if you combine weak learners they can really become strong learners uh, so that is known as boosting bagging so what are those fundamentals how do we combine weak learners and make them strong learners what is the idea of bagging all those things right so and and classifies as I did, at least uh, seven algorithms we go for it right some of them are listed here some of them are not written uh, then probably this is something that that uh, everybody may not be interested like example in marketing analytics if you are working in marketing analytics then probably conjoint analysis is something that you may be interested but if you are not then probably this may not be your uh, big area of interest okay so then of course like we go to our neural networks which are very very important because this idea of neural network has grown and this has become deep uh, neural networks or deep learning as you know it and this deep learning is one of the very important plus of artificial learning so we need to know neural networks so there, there are around 20 flavors of neural network if you look at it right it, the area is this big so we'll cover at least the two three flavors which are very very important in, in neural network so how do we understand neural network networks how we really get inside them and try to see what can be done right uh, of course after this we can go for if you want time series i haven't included here but if you want i can go for time series i thought i can remove time series and put uh, like let's say more of artificial intelligence there deep learning there and nlp which is like a way to deal with natural language processing i'm not saying this is a full blown course on it on it because nlp itself will require at least 20 sessions to uh, to probably cover it completely but at least it would be good if we can take one session long session on it and probably expose you to what NLP is what the challenges are where the research has reached what all things are readily available in forms of tools and all those things so you'll have to pick up those tools if, if a problem comes and you can start working and all those things and also introduce you to one more platform which is tensorflow which is a Google uh, given kind of a thing and, and I told you that optimization techniques like uh, introduce you to optimization techniques, uh, gradient boosting, stochastic, BFLG method, and all those things. So this is uh, like what my idea was. Now, any questions that you have, you may please go ahead and ask me. Like I've told you the uh, philosophy of this course. I've told you the objective is simply like make you hands on. This is what also the last thing that I added. There are many people who think that machine learning is a programming problem. Please please don't uh, get into all this because the programming in infrastructures uh, is, is a two year kind of a thing. So something which is hot now after two years, you'll find that something else has come. There is a marketing angle to it. There are a lot of companies who are working on it. There are a lot of marketing that happens. Okay, this is good or that is good. That will keep on changing. But when senior people are working, believe me, it's not a problem. Business problems cannot just be solved because you know programming, right? That cannot happen because I know programming of Spark or if I know Hadoop, uh, so that will solve my big data problem. That's not, that's just will probably, that will just give you a tool to handle that. That's all, nothing beyond that. I mean, when, when you talk of uh, machine learning. So uh, one thing that has to be clearly understood is there are people who are on an architecture level, right? So they are good at like knowing what kind of a solution infrastructure what kind of a stack you require i mean there should be a dope and on it that should that be coupled with spark should it be taken into the cloud so cloud is a big thing now so people who are working in cloud and and if they know how to move data into the cloud that that's a big uh, probably requirement of people who can actually uh, move data from uh, the relational databases kind of a thing to ultimately to cloud and and move everything there so that is more of a data engineering part there right do you understand so that is what uh, the data engineering thing is and this is more of data science machine learning and an artificial intelligence kind of a thing right so uh, any questions right so probably i've spoken for whatever time now you can ask any questions uh, if you want to, to get more yeah. clarity amit vijay here uh, in r yeah. and python how much uh, how much you are covering actually are you covering an advanced level or how you are covering uh, what is that See, what is the topic like you are covering 
Vijay, this, these, all these topics, I mean, when, when I run an algorithm, that means all these are very advanced algorithm. Uh, so we are going to run them in R and Python. Not every time I'll use both of the languages because then otherwise mm -hmm. it will become too long. Example, okay. the TensorFlow, we are going to cover through Python only, right? So that means okay. all these algorithms at the end of the day, you'll know how to run it in R and you'll know how to run it in Python, both the languages, okay? okay? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And uh, what about like once we uh, study this uh, particular course, uh, yeah. is it possible to get a job immediately or how uh, with respect to the market, how, how you covered the topic? See, but very, very honestly, I'm telling you, if, uh, um, and, and it's not uh, like giving you any wrong information, but believe me, Vijay, if you cover it the way I yeah. want it, you okay. will not get a person who can interview you. That's a guarantee that I can give. You can impress around a lot of people. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so now the, the, the getting a job. The other thing is getting a job is function of many things, right? You know that this right. entire market space is flooded by people, and and half of the uh, today only I got around 12 CVs. Will you believe all of them claiming to be machine learning expert, more than three years of experience, and all of them had done this Edureka courses, edX courses, and all those things. Uh, but for our HR team, I mean, uh, they they become very happy in collecting all this. But when that uh, probably CV comes to me, I know where probably the cracks are, right? And and where probably okay. there is a problem in claiming and doing projects and all those things. So the key thing is you should be focusing on doing some projects. I mean, ultimately, this is an area where you don't dirty your hands, probably. And, and this is uh, like uh, correct for like example, any other programming thing. Also, if you want to become a Java expert, uh, you have to dirty your hand, hands, isn't it? You have to spend yes. some time Absolutely. coding it and only you'll learn. Yeah. Yes, so that's yes. what I'm doing. So, so it's a function of all those things. When it comes to project, like uh, uh, when we are uh, during the course, how much project you are covering? Are you taking I mean, the I mean, project on the way and how you are going to handle the project? A very simple way. Yeah, I'm not. In the example. Yeah. So example there, uh, just an example. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So. OK, so uh, on the project part, Believe me, there are a lot of projects which are available, right? In in even in the open yeah. space space. If you look at Kaggle, there is a lot of data and very challenging projects which are available. What I generally do is I, I don't bound you by a particular project. I always say, OK, there is a list of projects that I can list for you, right? Lot of challenging data is available. There are few companies who give their data to the they, that is not from Kaggle, but other sources where where companies put their data into public domain. I can give you a whole list of these projects and what I and, and what I'll encourage is you can pick up whatever project you feel uh, may be good for you because it's more near to the current industry that you're working or for some other reason you think this would be more useful uh, to me so i'll i'll probably say that or if you, all of you want to work on different kind of a projects you can work on different projects right uh, so i'll okay. and and whatever number of projects you want i'll i'm always there to guide you and and work with you right so that's okay. one one thing that's unique here right sure sure okay so what would be the prerequisites to go take up this program I mean, the prerequisites would be an open mind and, and time to work hard. <laughs> if you have that, you have the prerequisites. OK, so uh, any statistical knowledge or the, any technical knowledge required? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Had it been there, I would have mentioned. I would have said that these this is what uh, the things are required, right? OK, uh, hi, uh, what hi. Po I'm sorry. Uh, no. Um, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Sangar. Go ahead. Sangar, go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, what about post this course? Is in how do we take this forward? And I was not sure about it. Uh, okay. Sure. So, how do you want to take it forward? Let me ask. Let me ask you. What is? What are the methods that uh, by which you want to take it forward? No, as in, uh, do we get any? Uh, do we get to work on a project and then get into the field, or how is it? How how does it work? 
see i i tell you very simply as i said the projects have to be done as probably a once like you have covered around 50 to 60% of the course because at that point of a time you because these these projects will require cross uh, machine learning kind of uh, let's say knowledge i mean one machine learning algorithm will not solve these problems right so around uh, after like you have covered 50% of the course so what we what we do is uh, as i said i'll give you a list of projects with data pro problem statement and all those things right some of them would be a really bad data really would be a very difficult problem to some easy kind of a thing all sorts of projects would be there so what i'll what i as i said what i'll encourage you to do at least two three projects so that you know what kind of a lingo uh, uh, is speaking when 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 you are on the shop when you are on the business uh, in inside the company or you are on the floor and all those things right so um, you actually know like what kind of things actually go into working uh, for a machine learning algorithm how do like people work on it what kind of things happen there and all those things right so that all those things can be delivered when you do that project right that is very very important so so the focus is one part yes i'm delivering theory all those things i'm showing you demonstrations uh, the language and all those things you learn with me but a very important component is that i'll end, i i'll request that at least all of you do minimum two project at least right and uh, not less than that so once you complete that project i'm sure you'll be very comfortable with the terms you'll be at least feel comfortable that okay i can uh, i can face an interview at least one or two interviews right so that's like uh, probably and anything else that you specifically want you you can spell it out now so that i let you know whether uh, we, we do it or we don't do it right as you said this is an advanced program you just give me uh, gave us an example that you, you had some 12 cvs listed out today at your office and then uh, you you got them very easily do you think after completing this program would we be able to compete with them that yes yeah, sure that's for sure okay yeah so yeah you can that my answer is yes you can okay okay that was great because because if i'm looking at cvs definitely and if i'm recruiting people i'm taking interviews and all those things i'll i'll have all those things in my mind when i'm designing this course right that's very important mm -hmm. very good okay bargo you are saying something yes uh, yes samit so what i wanted to ask you is like while you covering the ml algorithms you are also mm -hmm. uh, focusing on the um, mathematical part like what are we, what is the uh, functions that we are minimizing or maximizing what is the cost function yeah. Yeah. so all yeah. that you are covering right yeah okay so bhargavi what we'll do is here um, uh, as i said there there may be people like you who have some experience there right yeah. so let yeah. us do it in in this thing so wherever i think like example i even can cover equations for you or write what is qness is i can actually go to the fundamental uh, let's say formula no, no, fundamental to that, right? is okay. i mean uh, fundamental no, no. of the... let, let me complete let me complete that so so what we'll do is that Uh, there is a main course in which everybody can be a part other than that we'll have some extra sessions where people like who want to get into functions or or detailed things or mathematical equations whatever it can be anything i'm i'm just uh, giving examples so they can actually like get into it if they want right so this is how we go go about it right Okay. So let let me give an example. Let's say when you when you are running linear regression, uh, you can run it by R, and and we can actually we'll do a case study on it. We'll run codes. We'll look at outputs. We'll see uh, with whether that output is good or not. That's one part of it, right? That is enough for most of the participants. I think 99% of the participant that is good enough. But let's say that the participant who wants to understand that how does this regression thing happen based on matrix algebra. Now this may be required only by very few people and these are not things which are generally uh, done in uh, on the um, uh, in the companies or these are not things which are generally discussed during interviews and all those things so we can do it offline we can keep some sessions where we can say that okay matrix algebra how it applies or the optimization method how does it apply to a particular problem so we can have special sessions where we don't have like uh, this binding requirement of everybody joining anybody interested may join and, and if the person doesn't join he doesn't lose 
lose anything we'll have to like uh, this is how we go about it right so these are some optional sessions definitely like we do but when we are talking of svm we actually i go into detail and then discuss everything how does the boundary line form uh, how does the classification happen how how does like when you take a data what all happens what kind of calculations happen so all those things i definitely do discuss when i when i discuss svm so that it is it is so easy for you to explain it to anybody uh, that probably the person feels good about it that you know the real fundamentals yeah okay uh, and uh, whatever the examples you are providing right it will it'll all industry or maybe um, the practical kind of a example yes. right amit yes 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 no, nothing on uh, no. uh, let's say that uh, imaginary kind of a data practical thing uh, imaginary yes. like uh, say suppose if we take our iris data is available uh, the, there are so many yeah, data no, from no, the no, library iris, yeah, 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 yeah yeah no so, not so, iris data we can take a really complicated data when we yeah, do classification okay. where you feel you yourself so i'll show you iris data where you will see where there is a very nice classification result coming and at the same time i'll take that data yeah. and we'll work on that where you are really frustrated i mean suddenly your classification goes yeah, for yeah. a toss and all those things so how do you so, then how do you deal yeah. on those things yes what happens yeah. is amit when we take this data from the open sources right it is more or less it is very um, clean and need you will end up getting a very quick and easy no no no, no. Uh, Bhargavi, that's not the, the case that, i mean whatever you are saying uh, was applicable 3 years back things have changed now i'll give you a data and and show me if you can work on that data actually that is a data that is put by a company in the public domain so definitely it's a practical data it has all the ills that you are talking of it's unclean lot of problems so how do you bring it to a, a particular shape how do you bring it into a form where it is usable so those data those kind of data are surprisingly are now available right Okay. So, uh, I, will, uh, I will get like a couple of projects from my college. So, if anyone wants to do those with me, they welcome. Yeah, okay. that's a great okay. thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And uh, see, suppose for a classification. I mean, suppose if I take an example of the classification tree, we have like C5, Chaid. We have so many, so many. classifier exactly right see if you ask me how many clustering algorithms 200 we can't cover 200 yeah, right. let's be very practical so, about it so maybe yeah. you can choose like which is the best or the best industry standards or with your experience exactly 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 that's what i've done exactly that's what i've done right okay. and, uh, yeah and somebody was asking about the projects and all that so i feel i mean with the data science field i feel the more you practice the more as amit said the more you put your hands dirty then only you will learn you have to keep on practicing this is like an art you do it do it do it then you'll reach a perfection so that is just exactly. a own suggestion exactly exactly i agree see ultimately i'll again say one thing just listening to the lectures will give you a feel good factor that's for sure i can guarantee you because i have always got very good feedbacks and all those things but let me also share a kind of the statistics with this out of those 1000 people how many actually are working at data scientist probably the percentage is low because people did not bother to work hands on or make their hands dirty people whoever did this or understood this basic thing that okay i love to work on projects and they worked on project they are doing very very well i mean in the industry there is no doubt about it so this is extremely the course is not about me telling you that what i know this course is not about a demonstration of my knowledge right uh, ultimately i think the more important thing is that what we are able to do as a group what kind of a uh, knowledge i am able to transfer to you that is very important and that can only happen if we work on projects uh, one more question amit so actually uh, so uh, keeping aside all the data science part business when it comes to the formulation of the problem the hypothesis testing so uh, that is where um, uh, i need more of a focus like uh, business plays a very important role if i made my hypothesis if i make a statement of business which is wrong whatever the analysis that i'll do it will be it's of no use at all so uh, that's where uh, i need uh, uh, so, some kind of i mean with your experience like what type of business yeah. formula how do i no, formulate I, I think... the hypothesis that uh, yeah So, Bargavi, I think you missed the initial part of it. I where I mentioned very clearly because uh, 
uh, with the kind of experience that I come. So I like to cover the entire, let's say, life cycle of it. The life cycle starts mm -hmm. from understanding data, uh, understanding the problem statement, formalizing a problem statement, or as you said, like formulating some hypothesis, then understanding is the data that you have at hand, is it enough to probably test those kind of hypothesis, then selecting that algorithm, understanding what result are we delivering. You should not be at the mercy of the machines. What is the mercy of a machine? Yeah, yeah. When you deliver some kind of, a, uh, you just give some data input and it gives some output and you don't understand, is it usable or not usable in the first place? So the entire life cycle that's what experience is about how do we understand uh, everything in, in in this journey right yeah that's very important i mean what you said yes Amit. so uh, apart from this there are many times we fail to understand i mean what are the different types of uh, variables that should be actually putting into the machine learning algorithm say suppose which is like a factors or maybe a categorical or maybe something else yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is not relevant which is not relevant that is also That's where right. we fail to put in um try to do that maybe with your experience you would have seen people doing sure. wrong things more yeah, so yeah, yeah. um yeah so that's that's where i want uh, you to discuss more on um what we tend to do where we fail yeah, so yeah. all those things you are right, Bhargavi. I mean, see, the wrong things teach us more than the right things always, right? Yeah. So somehow, like, I, whatever, I, I also did a lot of wrong things. I'm not blaming anybody. Uh, I've also done many hilarious things. When I look at back at it, then I ask myself, how could I do it? Now, but that is today. But uh, when I was starting my journey, pro probably I was also not, uh, I also didn't know things. So I did many wrong things. I've seen people who are, who do wrong things, who are probably starting their journey. But definitely I'll share all those things. What should not be done, definitely. I, I like to share those issues also. Okay, Amit. Uh, so these are the questions that I have. Um, okay, yeah, so I, I think. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you oh, sorry, you were saying something. No, um, oh, no, you were saying uh, something. Please go ahead. Yeah, that's what regarding the equations and the theory behind. Uh, maybe some. Uh, I would like to know in detail. Maybe as you said, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can cover that later. Yeah. So what we can do is, if the thing goes very heavy, then we can have extra sessions for that. And and the people, if they want to join, they are always welcome. And if they think, okay, right now my aim is not to get into, let's say, a lot of theory, probably because I'm starting. So probably they may then skip it. And uh, so th that's how we'll do it. So don't worry about that. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Otherwise, it has been a Good session, good interactive session, and uh, thanks for. Uh, yeah, uh, um, uh, thank you. One more question. Uh, what are you covering on the optimization? Um, optimization, I showed you. I think these are the most leading algorithms that which are covered, right? Uh, and if you want genetic algorithm and all those things to be covered, I mean, you can always design if you want that. Okay, I want to cover uh, genetic algorithm also for optimization. But I'll say those are these are the ones which are generally used. The top two are 85 percent which are used. Uh, just okay. give me two minutes. There's somebody who is banging the bell. So okay. just excuse me for this. I'm just coming in a moment. Just okay. tell him not to ring the bell. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for this. So, so uh, talking of like uh, the optimization thing, uh, the upper the gradient descent and the stochastic gradient descent are the basically most used, 85% cases, or the flavors of this generally. You'll find flavors of this. Uh, only there are two or three algorithms which are very very difficult, but they are not used and are also very very difficult. Now you can take a call if you want to really learn that. The example Ant Hill. Or, or probably oh, there is something known as genetic algorithm and all those things. They are generally not used. I haven't seen them being used in any of the algorithms. But these oh. two, very specifically, are the most used. Okay. Yeah, actually, I want the genetic algorithms. 
and also uh, you have said that in case if we are interested we'll go through that uh, marketing analytics uh, where you showed us uh, i yeah. want that uh, uh, yeah th those uh, topics we we can take separately don't worry about it right for you probably we can take one or two sessions where uh, these things can be covered right okay. Okay. amit uh, one question did you work on game theory a little bit i worked i i'm i i'm not saying that i solved problems with that but uh, during my learning phase i worked on some problems but they were more of academic problems not of practical thing but definitely okay. if i get a problem I, I can work on that's what my feeling is at least okay okay no just ask because we uh, at our office they are trying to look into that one so they wanted somebody um, in case if they have some practical implementation so they were no, I think people. see so, I think I'll advise I mean all these things excite too much game theory and all this thing but uh, implementation and getting any let's say results and all those out of thing is is very very difficult like lot many people have tried and all those things but uh, probably it hasn't uh, proven to be the correct thing that's what like uh, my exposure to this area has been okay, okay so um, I think okay, um, okay. I, Thanks, Amit. Thanks for covering. Th um, thank you all for joining, and uh, and probably uh, if you have any other questions, still like if there are some questions, uh, you can send them to probably Ganguly, and uh, wish you best of luck. And that's all, and and thank thank you all for attending. Thank you. Uh, Thanks, Amit. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining uh, this uh, evening session. Hopefully, we have uh, cleared your, uh, you know, whatever the topics to be uh, covered during this course. And if you have any queries, you can write it to us. Uh, we can definitely take this ahead. So we are starting this course uh, uh, next week onwards. Uh, so uh, we want all the registration, everything to be finalized by this weekend at the most. And so that, you know, we can uh, start uh, this session uh probably from week uh, one of the weekdays like you know wednesday we have decided one wednesday and one uh, weekends that is on saturday or uh, sunday we'll obviously keep you uh, noted advance and obviously we'll keep you you know uh, advanced notification everything will be done from our side and if you have any queries related to the the section how it should be or the you know uh, the hours the breakups everything you can definitely write it to us we love to uh, you know answer your queries right okay sure sure thank you Bye. 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 yeah okay okay, okay thank you all bye thank you thanks for joining yeah bye, bye.